Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were perplexed and amazed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Let us pray together responsively a portion of Psalm 104 by whole verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you, to give them their food in due season. 
You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. The word of the Lord.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening of the day of the resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. It's Pentecost Sunday. The vestments are red and we are celebrating the Holy Spirit. Pentecost marks the end of Eastertide, which I would characterize as a season of goodbyes, and transitions. Pentecost Sunday is one of those days in the lectionary that gives you choices for which scriptures to read. We read Acts as our first lesson, and this is the piece of scripture that is, at least to me, the quintessential Pentecost reading about the flames appearing over the disciples' heads and the eruption of a cacophony of languages. Instead of that passage being the gospel today, I'd like to bring our attention to how a leader, how our God, gives us what we need when we have no idea how to go forward. You may or may not have noticed I have not been here the past two Sundays. My three children graduated from college. Thank you. David, my husband, and I have trekked from Raleigh to Philadelphia, back to Raleigh, to New Orleans, clapping, cheering, crying, sweating as we hauled boxes and bags out of dorm rooms and apartments. We have taken a thousand photos trying to capture the wonder and hold on. to the friends who won't be just down the hall anymore. It struck me how these springtime traditions, graduation, moving out of dorms, saying goodbye, starting new chapters, are apt metaphors for Jesus getting the disciples ready for his departure. Now, for those of you trying to keep track of a timeline, the reading from Acts is Pentecost, same as we are observing today. It says plainly, when the day of Pentecost had come. But today's gospel selection is actually a repeat, a portion of the reading we did on April 16th, the first Sunday after Easter. So a flashback for us, if you will. John is telling us about the days just following the crucifixion. The disciples have locked themselves in a house because they are scared. 
scared of the world outside that house where people <laughs> opposed the movement Jesus started and killed him. They are afraid for their own lives. In our world, at graduation time, we have a cluster of, in my case, 21 and 22-year-olds gathered generally on a central quad or in a giant arena space, scared of the outside world, the unknown. The emotions of these gatherings have parallels as well. The disciples are feeling the raw ache and loss of the crucifixion. The candidates for graduation are working through the pain and sadness of moving through the necessary reforming of relationships. Next up, Jesus appears and shows the disciples his hands and side. The disciples rejoice at the sheer fact that Jesus is standing before them, although they had just witnessed his crucifixion. And in our world, the graduates sitting in those white folding chairs waiting for the keynote speaker are sharing their own scars, their in-class humiliation, their epic all-nighters. They are celebrating with wonder that they made it. They survived those trials. They earned a seat in that graduation ceremony, and they will soon receive that longed-for diploma. Then in the gospel, we get to the part that we as humans don't do so well. The goodbye, the change, the reordering of how things will go from here. Jesus says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. The disciples will no longer be following Jesus, doing crowd control and managing visitation appointments. He won't be physically with them. They will have to figure things out on their own. Well, sort of. Hold on to that thought, because we'll come back to it. Our graduates, they are leaving the security of the guidance from their professors with whom they've developed rapport and connection, friends, meal plans. They are stepping into new roles with no clearly identified support network, or at least not one yet known to them so they think. Each of these groups, disciples, graduates, are standing on a precipice of having to learn to operate a new way, feeling like the rug has been pulled out from under their feet. But friends, don't stare too long into the void. Pull back from the ledge with me, because there's more to the story. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Now in some traditions, graduates receive engraved pens, watches, Jefferson cups, keychains, picture frames, cash. Jesus, Jesus' gift to those he is leaving, like today's collect says, is the gift of the Holy Spirit, a part of him. When we look at gift-giving traditions, we might guess that the gift is meant to be useful to the receiver for the next phase of life. Tools for more schooling, symbols of stepping into adult life. Jesus' gift actually sets that example. I'm leaving you, he says, but I'm giving you access to what you'll need for your next role. So our disciples are not left to figure things out on their own. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. And not just the disciples. The Holy Spirit resides in each of us, sustaining us, giving us what we need, when we need it. Actually, as 1 Corinthians tells us, the gift of the Holy Spirit to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Like the engraved keychain is a reminder for the graduate that there are people in the world who love them and are available for support, Jesus' gift is an all-access pass to the Holy Spirit. It's that safety net, that resource for figuring out what comes next. 
I have a discernment story for you. The last part of discernment to be a vocational deacon is called clinical pastoral education, in which you serve as a chaplain in a hospital setting. Now, on one of those occasions, I was called to a room where I met a woman who shared with me her life experience of being violated by a family member, being harassed, blamed in the communities where she sought comfort and refuge. As her world's words trailed off, she grabbed my hand and she asked, what do I do? Do I have to forgive my uncle? I've been told I have to just get over it and move on. Jesus says, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. But Jesus also recognized that there would be times when forgiveness is not acceptable, acknowledging if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. At the very same time, Jesus gives those choices, forgive, retain. Jesus also says, receive the Holy Spirit. Friends, through the Holy Spirit, we have the variety of gifts given for the common good. The Holy Spirit, residing in us, gives the support, the comfort, and the divinely given guidance we need to process or work through what comes next. I had no answer for the woman in the hospital bed. But the Holy Spirit, the gift Jesus gave the disciples, gave me, gives each of us, moved through me to offer a response. The voice of the Holy Spirit speaking through each of us with our own unique gift helps us find what to do next, guides us through forgiving or retaining. Either way, the Holy Spirit guides us to see and act with a clarity beyond our own abilities for the world around us, for the common good. So like our graduates, like the disciples, Jesus has risen, friends, and his gift of the Holy Spirit resides within each of us to guide each next step. Believing in, trusting in, having faith is all that it takes to access this gift. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Let us affirm our faith through the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead. Let us pray for the church and for the world. What was dead shall live. What was lost shall be found. What was forgotten shall be remembered. For Christ is risen and walks among us. Let us pray with confidence to God. Resurrected Christ, Hear us and transform us. For the unity of the church that created in your image and likeness, we may with open hearts see your image in one another. Resurrected Christ, hear us and transform us. For all members of St. Luke's that we may grow in faith and trust in you, O God, and love our neighbors as ourselves. Resurrected Christ, hear us and transform us. For the leaders of nations, states, counties, and cities, that knowing their responsibility and power, they may work for peace and justice and turn away from violence and inequity. Resurrected Christ, hear us and for those who share in the passion of Christ through illness, violence, oppression, loneliness, or any other trouble, that they may pass through their sufferings with courage and strength. Resurrected Christ, hear us and transform us. For everyone who is targeted because of their race, ethnicity, gender, or other part of their identity, that we may come to live in communities guided by justice with compassion. Resurrected Christ, hear us and transform us. For those who have died, for those who are keeping vigil, for all who grieve, that accompanied by Christ who triumphs over death, we may find comfort and rest for their souls. Resurrected Christ, hear us and transform us. Today we pray especially for everyone who has died in war, and we pray for an end to war. Lord, hear our prayers on behalf of those for whom we pray, and give us peace in this time of our Paschal rejoicing, for the sake of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. We have some new altar linens and hangings and vestments to bless, and so I would ask that any members of the Fonda family who would like to come forward, come forward. Any members of the Altar Guild or others who would like to come forward. Friends of Rosalie Fonda who would like to come forward to do so. So friends, you may have noticed that we have some beautiful new um, New altar hangings and chasuble stoles. Deacon Kate and I are wearing stoles that are new. These are a gift um, in very large part um, uh, in memory and in memory of and in love for Rosalie and Carl Fonda, uh, both artists in their own way and connoisseurs of art in their own way. I will say too that the chasuble, which I will don in a moment, um, and the stole were given, they were given by St. Luke's to Bob Johnson when he went off to become a bishop, and Mrs. Johnson has given them back to us. Um, it's not about me, but I'm gonna tell you that in 2000, I was confirmed by Bishop Johnson on the day of Pentecost, and he wore this chasuble at that time, so. Kate, you were choking up. I think I may cry when I put it on. Um, 
in gratitude and thanksgiving for Bishop Johnson. So we, have, we are surrounded indeed by a great cloud of witnesses here, <laughs> and these vestments and paraments are uh, signs to us of that. And so I um, direct you to the place in your bulletin for the blessing of new altar linens, vestments, and altar hangings. This is the offering which you shall receive from the people, gold, silver, and bronze, blue, and purple, and scarlet cloth, and finely woven linen. O Lord my God, how excellent is your greatness. O glorious God, all your works proclaim your perfect beauty. Accept our offering of these altar linens and these vestments and altar hangings, and grant that they may adorn this sanctuary and show forth your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for being here on this occasion. We have another exciting moment, the presentation of choir medals. So I will ask, Kate is, Kay is coming forward with the choir. line up right here would be great. I think if you face K for now, that'd be great. Thank you. Our psalm today said, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. To me, being with uh, these wonderful folks in the choir for a lot of years now, <laughs> I think this, uh, this psalm is particularly Meaningful, me to, meaningful to me today because I think these folks who come week after week um, to give of themselves to the ministry of music exemplify the words of the psalm. And I'm so deeply grateful to be a part of this. These folks have been working on a curriculum, which you can read more about in the bulletin if you're interested. It's called Voice for Life, and it's a several-leveled uh, series of workbooks, and uh, each one represents different levels of skill and um, sight reading, music theory, and so on, and voice training. And our adults have been working on this now, and uh, they have earned their ribbons for first level and um, above that. So today I would like to present them with their ribbons. So Kay will present the ribbons and then we'll pray. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's pray and then we can show our, our appreciation by applause. O God, whom saints and angels delight to worship in heaven, be ever present with your servants who seek through art and music to perfect the praises offered by your people on earth and grant to them even now glimpses of your beauty and make them worthy at length to behold it unveiled forevermore. 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all, always. <laughs> Well, it is lovely to see you all and to be here and to uh, know we have people worshiping with us through Facebook Live as well. So thank you all for being with us in person, being here in person or over the internet. I'm Rhonda Lee. I'm the Rector Time Certain here with St. Luke's and I'm delighted to see you all. We do have fellowship time after the service through those doors in the Sprague room, coffee and refreshments. So I hope you'll stay for that. I have a couple of things to draw to your attention um, in our announcements, but please do take the bulletin home and read the announcements when you have a chance. Um, let me see, we have the new altar hangings, thanks be to God. We had a lovely visit today at, for our adult learning. This is the thing I wanted to draw especially to your attention. Through the season of Easter, Deacon Kate and, um, and Bob Buchanan have been uh, shepherding a series of um, adult learnings about living into living into our faith, Easter, sorry? Loving one another. Loving one another, thank you. Um, you, think, you would think that I would remember that. Um, loving one another. And today we had the final visit from a community member to help us think about how we might develop mo even more relationships outside are outside the church within the community. And today our visit was from Alex, who is on staff at the LGBTQ Center of Durham. And Alex had great um, options for us to uh, potentially help out and be in relationship with the LGBTQ Center and their youth center. They also have senior support. And so there's just a wealth of possibilities there in terms of us joining in activities at the center, opening up our space, lots of possibilities that I'm excited about. And so uh, if you'd like to know more about that, we do have some resources. They're still in the, in, on the table in the Kramer room. Um, or talk to Bob Buchanan, Kate, or myself. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Luke, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
please join me in the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God and Mother of us all, be upon you today and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia. <laughs>